everyone, it's Kay from Craft with Kay. How are you doing? In the room with me is of course the wonderful Pickle. Yeah. So, this video is tips and tricks on diamond painting. <coughs> so yeah. This is going to be any helpful tips that I can think of to put into one place for you all. Um, so yeah. So, some first off ones, it's easiest to work on a kit that you can see symbols on. Now down here you can see I have got a mix of this is called colour blocking where it's all one symbol, large chunks of area of one symbol. And this is what we mean by confetti where you can see we've got diff lots of different symbols in a small amount of space. Um and yeah. So that's the difference between colour blocking and confetti. Is purely of the amount of space uh, we, that you've got one symbol basically. Now, something I find very helpful to use is a cover minder. So, the one I'm currently using at the moment is this one, and all it is is it's some sort of <coughs> usually something nice on the front, design wise, and it's a magnet. And they can come in all sorts of different shapes, sizes, styles. So here's another one, another one. So these are quite a collect. Look, people like to collect these and uh, choose a painting. Dive. Oh, hey, sweetie. Sorry about that. Pickle uh, demanded attention. So as I was saying, with cover minders, all you do is you take the smaller magnet, put that underneath your canvas, and just find it with your top magnet. And then when you peel back. It'll hold it out of plate, out of the way for you. Uh, cover minders and needle minders are essentially the same thing. The main difference is for needle minders specifically, they are typically flat so that they can hold onto a magnet whilst you're working on a project. Uh, hold onto a needle, sorry. <coughs> Don't excuse me. Right, so that's that. Uh, let's see, lighting. So, a lot of people have a light pad, which is, well, a very thin pad that goes underneath your kit and shines a light underneath it, basically, to show the symbols. Now, for me, personally, I don't use those because they give me a headache because of the light shining in my face. So, what I use is, if I can get it in shot, I have an overhead light. It's got different settings um, of brightness and stuff, so depending on your needs... Yeah. So it's very important to be able to see your symbols. The more you strain <coughs> to see your symbols, the slower things are going to go and you're going to get a headache and you're not going to enjoy it as much. Speaking of symbols, personally, what I find easiest when I'm kitting up is I do the symbols nice and big and I do the DMC code next to it really small because I want to save these tools afterwards but I always work on a kit by symbol I never go back and forth to the legend I literally just look on the canvas say okay I need a music note music note got it no oh okay I need I don't know 252 what's 252 and then look for, go for the symbol this is how I find it easiest I go for the symbol and just work on kits that way if everyone works different ways you just got to find what works best for you personally what I find easiest is go working by symbol <coughs> so yeah so this is my drill pen that I use you can just use the bog standard drill pens that you get in the kits and I did for a really long time um, but when you're diamond painting for a long time and you want some comfort get a chunkier pen oh hey sweetie okay Okay, another thing I've just thought of as well between colour blocking and confetti is detail. Uh, a lot of the time, when you have a lot of uh, confetti, can mean you get quite a bit of detail. Hey, sweetie. Um, so that the image is really detailed. Uh, this is also a big difference between squares and rounds. I love working on squares. Um, rounds tend to be a bit more sparkly. But squares get you more definition, is my personal experience. People have their different preferences. But that's kind of how I go. One second. Right, sorry about that again. It's going to be one of those uh, videos, I think. 
Uh, so yeah, a lot of people get intimidated by squares. Personally, I don't quite understand it because squares are my preferred shape. But there's no right or wrong sh uh, drill shape to use. It's all down to personal preference. Now, on a drill pen, uh, all drill pens have a single placer. I've got a metal tip in mind because I got one in a, um, a kit once. But generally speaking, single placer is well, what it says on the tin. It's for single drills, to put down one drill at a time. On the other end here, I have my four placer. I love my four placer, it means I could put up to four drills down at any given time. Now, you can get any number of places from two, three, all the way up to 15 places. I've tried a seven placer before, couldn't quite get the hang of it, so I'm back down to four. Now, personally, I don't always actually use it as a four placer. Or pick up three drills, two drills, or even just one drill. It all depends on what you need. So, for example, if I was to go over here, if I get you to focus in, and I wanted to get over to that bit as well, I'd just put two drills on one side. See how I've got that gap in the middle? And then I can just go and put that down there. So that's what I often do with my multiplacer. I'll pick up drills here and there. Well, I'll just pick up one right now. Just pop it there. It doesn't matter how how you use it, to be honest. And let me just move you up a little bit so I stop hitting you. There we go. So I will often twiddle between the two. So if I need to nudge something, I'll go back down to the single placer. If you need to move your drills over a bit or anything, either use tweezers or use your single placer. You're more likely to break a multi-placer by trying to shove them and it doesn't go as neatly uh, as you'd like to as well. So yeah, that's about that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish this color. See how I'll, I will literally, I don't even think about it, I will literally just keep working and flip it. It's just down to, I would say skill, but it's also kind of like habit. Like when I would write down stuff, I'd often twizzle my pen in my hand, so I'm used to kind of doing that sort of action. <clears throat> so it's just down to practice, practice, practice. Okay, I've got the next colour out, so I wanted to show you some different ways to do some colour blocking. So some people will do one drill at a time, and there's nothing wrong with that. Again, it's down to personal preference. Let's just bring this over here so I can see what I'm doing a bit better. Um, so you can either single place the entire way like so that's just four down or you can do what they call checkerboarding now you could do the single place checkerboard which is where you skip drills you skip a space to make a checkerboard like you would see on uh, like a chess set or something now when I do checkerboards I don't often go in lines like that I usually go in random diagonals you can make patterns as you fill it out and stuff but the idea behind this is to get your drills nice and straight because then all you have to do is go along and fill them in. So this is a good way to keep your drill straight. So I don't often single place because personally I find it really tedious. However, the one place I will single place is when I'm using the color white um, or a really light color. And that's mostly because then you definitely won't see much of the uh, background if you misplace it. But for me, I will often I do my own sort of checkerboard, which is with my multiplacer. So you just kind of exactly the same principle. She says if I can get my drills to go on. I'm still getting used to using a metal multiplacer. But it is exactly the same, except for you you're using a multiplacer instead of a single placer. Now the main reason I'm doing it straight up instead of uh, long ways, like this, is because I find I have less gapping issues when I go vertically instead. You could literally do whatever pattern you wanted or just place them down 
right next to each other. There really is no real rhyme or reason. It's literally down to personal preference. It's literally all it comes down to. <clears throat> and the only way you're going to find out your personal preferences is to give everything a shot. Now with squares, obviously at the moment you can see that there's a bit of a gap there. So I can either just nudge it down or what you've got to remember is there's always going to be a little bit of gapping. And you want that because then you're not going to have popping drills. Plus, when you actually step back from a painting and it's up on the wall or something like that, you aren't going to notice the gapping. It's only because we're so close up when we're working on these things um, that it really sticks out to us. So that's something too important. Remember to something important to remember. Also, if you're using a light pad and it's switched on, all the gapping is going to be very obvious. As soon as you switch it off and take a step back, you're not going to see those gaps. Also, squares seem to have a, a pretty good habit, actually, of straightening themselves out as you um, place more and more down. They will just kind of fit together a bit easier. Again, I personally prefer squares. I love squares. I'm not a big fan of rounds. I can't really use my multiplacer with rounds very well. But again, it's all down to personal preference. Um, also, another thing to keep an eye on. If you want to work a bit quicker, it's no it's no point having a tray all the way over there and you having to go dunk, 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 dunk. You want to keep your tray close to where you're working. So you're not having so far to go between refills. And yeah, that's the biggest key, is to keep your tray close to where, where you're working. Because if it's all the way over there, you're going to spend so much time uh, going from one place to the other. Another thing as well is... I personally don't do this because I can't be bothered. But if you have your drill tray set up the same way that you're placing your drills, that is also a lot quicker because then you're not having to pick them up, rotate it, place it down. Honestly, it doesn't bother me. But, uh, again, if you want more speed, uh, this is it. And I say more speed because someone asked me how I get my diamond paints done so quickly. Honestly, it's a hit and miss. Sometimes I can get them done pretty quick. Other times they kind of drag along. Um, I couldn't really tell you why. But that's checkerboarding. <coughs> Excuse me. One second. But yeah, big thing to remember is you should be enjoying this. It's an enjoyable hobby to escape a bit and do something nice so honestly it does not matter how quickly or slowly or anything like that that you get a kit done as long as you are enjoying it that is the main point why stress over it i do want to mention as well um about sizes so the more detail you have on an image the bigger you're going to want to be to get all that detail especially with rounds Square drills are a tiny bit smaller than round, so sometimes it can feel like a square's taking a long time to do, but that's because there's like 10% more drills. Um, so there is that. But um, yeah, some images people get really disheartened with because typically I stay away from 30 by 40s as a general rule because a lot of the time, unless it's some sort of cartoon, image or something it's just not gonna have the detail also the more detailed the background is to the main focus that's gonna have a huge impact as well and what I mean by that is for example this is quite a bland background like there's not not like tons of leaves everywhere there's it's just like one or two colors in the background that means that they can go a bit smaller now, if there was tons of leaves and bricks or whatever in the background, then you're going to need a bigger image because the detail just is not going to come out and then you're going to be disappointed. Uh, so typically, bigger is better with a lot of images. Um, unless it's super focused on one main point of an image. So that's why I say like cartoon images, you can usually get away with being a bit smaller. This is one of the smaller images I've done. I think it's a 40 by 50. And yeah, which brings me up to another point actually. When you're working on bigger kits, 
I only have so much space on my desk. So what I do is I roll. As I'm working, I roll it and you just use some pegs. Always roll with the drills out. You've got to have your drills out. If you roll with the drills in, they're going to pop off and ping off and stuff like that. So on any large kit, or any kit that's a bit too big for your workspace, roll up what you've done. What I typically do is I have this bit hanging off. And depending on where I'm at, I'll have it tucked underneath my desk a bit. And then I just scroll up as I go along, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else, to be honest. Um, I do recommend saving your money and going to um, licensed places because A, they pay the artist to use their work. And B, the quality of those kits are often so much better. Um, from the drill field to the glue to the actual quality of the drills themselves. There's nothing worse than working on a kit <coughs> with popping drills or tons of drills with holes in them or knobbly bits on the side or with really poor symbols. So that's something to keep an eye on as well, to be mindful of. I do think it's worth saving up some money instead of getting all the cheap kits say getting i don't know 10 20 cheap kits i would rather put my money aside to get a couple of quality kits because a they're also going to be a lot bigger and they take more time to do anyway um but again it all comes down to personal preference i can't tell you what to do with your money just like you can't tell me what to do with mine but i do i do recommend it i do recommend saving up for quality kits but again it's as most things it comes down to personal preference and just what's available to you at the time as well i hope that's covered most things i've think i've covered most things if i've missed anything else please tell me in the comments down below i love uh, seeing comments and trying to respond to them um if it's within my power to do so i will always happily update videos if uh, they've got the wrong information in them and stuff or if there's just more information to share um feel free to have a look through past videos as well i have got videos on how to work on a larger kit which i might update soon as well if i did that what kind of things would you want to see covered but for now guys i'm going to say goodbye and i hope you have a wonderful wonderful day bye <laughs>